I have to talk about this because it's driving me absolutely fucking nuts. I'm a sustainable landscape designer who lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. One of our local news outlets over the weekend posted an article pushing pretty heavily artificial turf. And as a former digital producer in a local news station, not Fox 13, but another one local, it is making me feel all types of ways that the only sources quoted in this article is one owner of an artificial turf company. The reason I find this so insidious, not just the fact that they're busting myths about the fact that the artificial turf doesn't smell and doesn't heat up in the sun, it does. It does. It's that the article then mentions that Utah's passing a bill that could allow homeowners to get one to two dollars per square foot in rebates if they want to swap out their like really thirsty lawns or landscapes for more drought tolerant, eco friendly landscapes. This, of course, is great news. However, the article's then saying his phone is ringing off the hook with people curious about artificial turf because of these rebates that are coming in, implying that artificial turf is the correct choice to swap out for your landscape. Here's what you need to know about artificial turf. One, it contributes to heat island effect. Our cities are significantly warmer than rural and suburban areas because we don't have enough organic matter here. How do we cool our cities down? We plant trees, we plant grass. Two, it is linked to all sorts of health issues, including a bunch of skin infections and whatnot. Think about this. If you have a dog, waste on the lawn, then you have a kid running, playing, scraping the knee, now you have blood on the lawn. What's happening to those children's skin? Pretty concerning studies out there linking it to cancer and athletes, like soccer players who play on artificial turf all the time. Look that up if you're interested. It starves the soil of nutrients underneath, and also you still have to weed it because weed seeds travel by air and then root down in the turf, and you still have to rip the weeds out. And on top of all of that, it is made of plastic. It is literal fossil fuels, and the carbon footprint of creating an artificial turf lawn is actually probably more than just maintaining a generally responsible amount of regular grass. So if you don't want to do the whole like lush landscape wildlife habitat thing because you want room for your kids or your dogs to run around or whatever, my suggestion, if you can't swap out for a drought tolerant grass like buffalo grass or dwarf tall fescues or something like that, we can still make your lawn better for the planet. One, we can shrink the size of your lawn if that's possible. Two, we'll install an efficient sprinkler system. Three, we'll get you on an efficient watering schedule. If you water more deeply, less often, your grass is going to stay greener and healthier. Four, we could do a biochar application where we core and we apply a biochar that's going to allow your lawn to hold on to a lot more moisture. Five, since we've cored your lawn already, we could start overseeding with more drought tolerant varieties like dwarf tall fescues, fine fescues, yarrow, maybe even some clover just to make your yard a little more resilient. And we're able to get Kentucky bluegrass lawns in full sun down to 20 or 30 minutes a week of water max. And I guarantee you that is better for the earth than fucking AstroTurf. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.